Yeah. Thank you very much. A warm welcome to all of you. Um, mental health, uh, global mental health reverse is a title. What can we learn uh, from others? Now, one thing we can learn is how to treat people properly. Because when I arrive at the airport from, from Lima, someone looks at my, my passport and then checks it for a few minutes. Maybe you have to fill in a form then stamps and that's it. When our colleague, an established researcher from Peru wants to come here, he has to apply for a visa. Now they said it would take three weeks. After seven weeks, he hadn't received it. Uh, sitting there every day with packed suitcases, waiting whether they could uh, come or not. No, he couldn't, he wasn't the only one. Someone from Pakistan didn't get their, their visa either. So we can talk about equity and partnership and all that, but if that's the way how we treat people in such a humiliating, offensive and degrading manners, and of course it's all, um, all hot air. So we are two uh, present. We are not those two presentations short because uh, Vicky Bird will step in for one, and um, uh, Francisco Diaz from Peru has sent has sent um, a film. But I think it is um, pretty embarrassing and shameful for someone like me who chairs this group to have to tell you that. Okay, so the the, the globe is a, is an acronym for an NAHR Global Health Research Group. The official title was Global Health Research Group for Developing Psychosocial Interventions at Barts and the London School of Medicine and Dentistry. So it was funded by the NHR, but also supported by Queen Mary and the Trust. The Trust was a formal um, partner in this group. And so we had three aims. Exploring and advancing understandings of global mental health. We did a, we published a review paper about what global mental health can mean, a paper about the future scenarios for global mental health. Building research capacity is something that we will not go into very much today. Um, a very difficult subject, how to build research capacity with our money in other countries when there may not be the career pathways and not the structures. But how, today it is mainly about the third aim, improving care for patients with severe mental disorders, existing resources. What does that mean? We didn't want to go for specialized services with highly qualified psychologists or whatever. First, because the psychologists are not there. Secondly, even if the psychologists were there, the money is not there to pay for them. And thirdly, um, we, we want to use existing resources that are already there, A, in healthcare uh, relationships, in families, and in communities. That means in relationships with healthcare professionals, we used Dialogue Plus. Most of you will know it. So very briefly, in a routine uh, session with a, a, a clinician patient session, patient and uh, clinician fills this out, how satisfied the patient is with different areas of life. After that, has an overview and decide what they want to talk about and then address each of the concerns in a four-step approach. Now, today is not the um, uh, is a time to elaborate on that. Then with families, we had multi-family groups. So idea that clinicians meet with the families but also patients. So that patients and families would share experience across, um, across their, um, their families and with communities befriending where people from the community, nothing to do with mental health, befriend um, a patient or a group of patients. We started with partners in Colombia, Bosnia, Herzegovina, and, and Uganda, and decided this would be our very, very ambitious goal, to have open non-controlled -control trials, exploratory or proof of concept, you could call them, with 30 patients in each of the countries on each of the um, interventions, putting in the applications that honestly we may not get every um, intervention every country um, addressed. Then we start with visiting countries, not the, not the worst way to start a project. So first Bosnia as a governor, then we went to Uganda, to Colombia, and had a cheerful meeting in London. And with uh, in good mood, we went about it. So we agreed on the interventions and the rough research design. We agreed that all interventions would be for six months, just to 
make some comparable, and that we would uh, evaluate at baseline six months and after 12 months. So we had come con some consistency in key characteristics, but also some variability and countries were free to change uh, the uh, implementation. But then something happened, some pandemic kicked in. No in-person meetings, very, very difficult recruitment of participants, no in-person interventions. So what happened to our wonderful, ambitious plans to do all these studies? This. So instead of open non-controlled trials, our partners who are sitting here managed to deliver RCTs, cluster RCTs or individually uh, randomized RCTs with large um, um, sample sizes, um, all studies completed, nine studies completed, and with a much more methodologically ambitious and rigorous uh, approach than we had originally, um, originally planned. Then we widened the partnership. Some money was left, so we widened the partnership and brought partners from Peru, Argentina, and Pakistan in. And even they completed trials, open non-controlled trials with family involvement, Dialogue Plus, Dialogue Plus, the only trial where patients were already uh, recruited and some had already been treated with Dialogue Plus in Peru. That had, been, that had to be stopped. And if you know a bit about it, Peru was particularly, particularly hard hit by the, by the pandemic, so that couldn't be completed. Then, admittedly, with additional money, we also completed open on control trials on using Dialogue Plus in primary care. We also had follow-on studies. So uh, I mentioned research capacity. So we did manage to get out of this collaboration further grants to about Dialogue Plus in uh, Colombia, funded by the MRC and ESRC, um, a study on how arts organizations can work during the pandemic, funded by the AHRC, uh, a large program funded by the MRC, and finally another one funded by the NHR, and the biggest of all is still under embargo, so I can't share it. But there's, there's even more. So we will present something from these studies. We also, that we did in GLOBE, we also have a few presentations on this year what came out, and one presentation, the last before the break, that was done even before we started GLOBE, but when you hear it, you will hopefully agree it's too good to miss. You should know about that. And that's where we are. And so Vicky Bird will step in and then I pass on to you. 